Good afternoon, good evening. Hello, this is Kevin from Personal Tutor, bringing to you the chapter, The Inchcape Rock, a poem written in 1820s by Robert Southey. Robert Southey in 1820s, friends, can you believe it? Like, it's the pre-British pre era, the Victorian era. He was a poet who wrote the poems based on the daily happenings upon the maelstroms that take place in the mind of a human soul. It's about an inchcape rock. It's about a rock bell, usually kept near lighthouses, near the Charlotte shores where the storms come out and give turmoilous thrashing to the sailing ships. As the poem goes, let's have a verse. No stir in the air, no stir in the sea, the ship was still as she could be. Her sails from heaven received no motion, her knee was steady in the ocean. Like there was no motion in the air, the sea was calm, and the ship was still as a home. Now, her sail from heaven received no motion. The ship did not receive any air, the sails were up high, and it shows the immenseness, the dignity, the titanic feature that the ship had, my friends. It's about the huge sail that reached up to the heaven. And see the gesture. The poet has received beautiful literary word over here. He says that her knee was steady in the ocean. The knee usually is the thing that stills a ship. So he goes ahead and says that the heel was steady in the ocean, it wasn't shaking, the bottom part of the ship wasn't moving at all. It was calm, as calm as anything could be. Without either sign or sound of the shock, the waves flowed over the Inchcape Rock. So little they rose, so little they fell, they did not move the Inchcape Bell. Now this is about an Inchcape, it's, it's about a boy. It's about a boy that's usually kept in the turmoilous waters of the ocean to give a reminiscence of danger to the sailors. Now here, it's said about the Inchcape Rock. Inchcape Rock is a place where usually the sea becomes treacherous and makes ships blow. Now it is said that there was nothing wrong, it was just calm, the sea was calm, the waves were calm, the Inchcape Bell wasn't ringing at all, that sounds the danger. The Abaddon Abrathok had placed that bell on the Inchcape Rock. On a boy in a storm, it floated and swung, and over the waves, it's falling to run. Now, when the sea was into turmoil, when the waves were tre treacherous, you know, and the, the wind was thrashing the boats towards the Inchcape Rock, that would give a bad sign, you know. It happened that there was this abbot, a priest of Abrathok. The abbot of Abrathok decided to place a boy and tie a bell on the boy so that when the oceans were stormy and the winds were turmoilous, it would warn the sailors or the shippers about the treacherous rock that hides below the wave. Now, when the rock was hit by surge swell, the mariners heard the warning bell, and then they knew the perilous rock and blessed of Abbot of Abrathon. Whenever the sailors move, moved around in this part of the ocean, whenever the things used to go wrong, it was this bell tied in the boy of the Inchcape Rock that used to ring and immediately the sailors used to know that this is the place where they should be moving ahead, they should be going away from it since there are treacherous rocks that may go ahead and destroy the ships. Hence, giving the blessings to the abbot of Abrathon. Now, the abbot of Abrathon was actually a person who thought kind about the humanity, who thought peace, who really wanted the sailors to be safe, my friends. Thus, even after he had left to his heavenly abode, he received blessings from the sailors who really thanked him of going ahead and taking a step to tie a bell on the boy so that when the seas are turmoilous, they would be warned about the warning that is coming ahead.
The sun in the heaven was shining gay, all things were joyful on that day. The sea birds screamed as they wheeled around, and there was joy in the sound. Now it's about another day. A day usually on a seashore, my friends. The sun shines beautifully up there. The sea is calm, there are beautiful waves, the seagulls, the seabirds trying to fly around in the sea gale. The gale means wind. And the chirping gives out a beautiful, pleasurous nature of them as if they are enjoying the day and the nature's beauty and the beautiful scene that the poet here explains. The boy of the Inchgate Bell was seen, a darker speck on the ocean green. Sir Ralph the rover walked his deck and fixed his eyes on the darker speck. Now, Sir Rover is actually a parrot. He believes in grazing the destroyed ships. He believes in gaining the benefits from the ships that are destroyed the sailors that are drowned and the belongings. Now, the boy was seen as a dark patch on the green ocean and Sir Rover was keenly looking at the bell, which was not ringing, yet it was seen floating in the boy. He felt the cheering power of spring. It made him whistle, it made him sing. His heart was mid-full to excess, but the Rover's birth was wickedness. Now, as I said, Sir Rover was a wicked man, a treacherous mind. Although he was happy and gay and was singing around, yet there was some wickedness going around in his mind. His eye was on the Inchcape float. Quoth he, my men put out the boat and drove me to the Inchcape rock and I played the Abbot of Amber. Now he asked his men to take him to the Inchcape rock and he would spoil the plight. He would spoil the gift given by the Abbot of Abbot Thus his men sailed him towards the Inchcape rock. The boat is lowered, the boatmen row, and to the Inchcape rock they go. Sir Ralph went over from the boat and he cut the bell from the Inchcape rock. Wow, now that is really something that he did. As it said, the boat was lowered, that is a small boat, a light boat was lowered. Usually it happens in the bigger ships, when they need to go to the shore, a smaller boat is lowered down and the people go into explode the expansions. Thus they went out there. And through the Inchkip cave, they went there and here, this fellow, Sir Rover, his wickedness comes to the height now, my friends. He just went ahead and cut the bell from the floor. That was the warning bell, my friends. Down sank the bell with a gurgling sound, the bubbles rose and the burst around. Quote Sir Ralph, the next who comes to the rock one bless, the abbot of Abograthok. What he did was, he just threw the bell down the ocean. It went down with a gurgling sound. The gurgling sound is means as if killing a live soul that's screaming for air, my friends. Just see to it, the bell when thrown as if on thing, it has got air in it and the air comes out, it gives a gurgling sound. But here, beautifully, Robert Sutty explains the life the bell to be a living creature. It actually helps people not to get affected by the treacherous rock of the inch cave. And as the bell goes down the sea, the gurgling sound comes up as if somebody is gasping for breath. Thus, it is depicted in a mode of killing somebody. And thus, Sarah's quoting that as the bell goes down now. Nobody else would in future bless the Abbot of Alabrotham. Sir Ralph the Roma sailed away. He scored the sea so many a day. And now from Richard Francis, though he sees his course for Scotland show. Sir Ralph, as I said, is a wicked man. He is a pirate at the sea. He grazes the destroyed ships. He loots the seamen. And now he has become rich with money. He's coming back to the shore of Scotland where he actually belongs to. Here I will explain. Rover. Rover is a bay near Dover Castle. 
in the Scottish lands, in the United Kingdom, my friends. So this fellow goes back, is on the way back to his Scottish abode. So thick a haze, oh spread the sky, they cannot see the sun or high. The wind had blown a gale all day, at the evening it had died away. Now, a gale. Gale is an English word for the sea wind. That is a strong sea wind. Usually people in the United Kingdom use the word gale because it's the sea wind that is strong. In the every year, the treacherous sky grows dark. There is mist, there is fog, nothing can be seen, and the gale pushes it towards somewhere, pushes the ship of the rover towards somewhere where they never knew. But in the evening, the gale went away, the mist died, the sky grew clear. On the deck, the rover takes its stand, so dark it's safe, it is, they see no land, coats are round, it will be like a sun, for there is a dawn and the rising moon. Sarah still believes that he is somewhere blessed by God. He is somewhere near the ocean, shore, and they will be reaching the land very soon. That's what he believes. Thus he encourages his men to stay alive and be enriched with courage. Cast here, said one, the broken throne. For me thinks we should be near the shore. Now where we are, I cannot tell, but I wish we could hear the inch cable. Alas, my friends, here comes the cry from the sailor. The sailor clearly depicts now that dear captain, Sir Rover, as my experience calls, as my experience says, we would be near a show, we thinks near a show. This really gives a Scottish, ac Scottish accent, my friends, that is said over here, we thinks we near a show. And I wish we could hear the inch cape bell. The sailor gets on the glide and wishes that I could hear about the show if there is a danger. They hear no sound, the swell is strong, through the wind that fallen, they drift along, till the vessel strikes on a shipping shock. Oh Christ, it is the inch cape rock. <laughs> the swell, the swell in the sea is usually the rise in the ocean. The ship goes up and then it slowly subsides. Now, the wind had fallen, there was a swell in the sea, yet the wind had fallen. And there was nothing, no movement at all, but the ship was moving somewhere smoothly. And trash comes down and stops and gets shattered. Oh my god, it is the inch kid rock. Yeah, it is again said that due to the absence of the boy, the ship gets hit to the rock. Sir Ralph the rover tore his hair and he cursed himself in despair. The waves rush in on every side. The ship is sinking beneath the tide. Now Sir Ralph really is distressed, astonished, worried that, oh my God, I'm going to be drowned. The ship is being teared. We have been taken down. That's what he says. Like, he feels it. Like, the tide goes down. But even in his dying fear, one dreadful sound could the rover hear. A sound of as if with the inch cape bell, the devil below was ringing its bell. While the ship was drowning, the men were drowning, in a distance from the bottom of the sea, the rover, while it was being pulled down, dying, could hear a strange bell that was ringing. It clearly depicted as if the, de the devil was calling him down, pulling him down towards his own death. Now this is what he has mentioned over here. Now let's have a look at the question and answers now, my friends. Question one, why had the abbot of Abrabroth placed the bell on the H.K. Brock? The abbot of Abrabroth was a person who thought good about people, my friends. He really wanted no more sailors, no more ships to be destroyed, to be drowned by the treacherous inch cape rock. Thus, he had placed a boy, tied a bell to the boy, and when the tide would go high or the seas would be stormy, the boy would ring, the bell would ring, thus giving out the people a warning sign that there is an immense danger over here, so they shouldn't be arriving at this very place. 
So thus it shows that the abbot was a person pious by heart and he was looking forward towards the kindness of other people. Why did Rolf cut off the bell? Sir Rolf Rover was a man wicked by heart. He was filled with selfish glory of his own. He usually dined on the destruction of other sailors and other seamen. He enjoyed collecting the leftovers and got rich by collecting the valuables, the ornaments, the amount that the ships and the sailors left. He was a wicked man at the heart. Thus, he went ahead and cut the bell in order to exaggerate the chances of sailors getting accidented at the same inch cape rock so that he may collect more and more of destruction, more and more of valuables left over by the ships. Thus he was looking forward to collect it and that's why he cut the bell. Now, what sort of man the abbot of Abrutok was? Well, the abbot, as explained earlier, was a person kind at heart. He was a godly man. He wanted everybody to be saved at this part of the sea. He was a pious and a gentle heart. Thus, he thought about the betterment of people around, my friends. Describe the dying moment of Sir Ralph Rover. Well, at the last moments of his life, Sir Ralph Rover knew that he had committed a mistake by cutting the bell of the boy. He had created a blunder, thus pulling him towards his own death and his despair. At the last moments, he could listen to the ringing bell as if the devil inside the sea himself was ringing the bell and letting Sarova know about his death. He knew that the devil now was calling and his death was imminent. He couldn't repeat what he had done. He couldn't repent what he had destroyed. This was a beautiful poem, my friends, by Robert Sotheby, still given out to you in the NCRT syllabus, written in 1820. It's a long, old poem, beautifully encompasses the English literature, and we as personal tutors are in a constant rush to provide you the briefs, the explanations, and comments about such chapters. If you have any questions, my friends, I would request you to go ahead and please answer us or comment below. We would definitely go ahead and reply. If you want to know something about us, you can just press the button about us. Please do subscribe our channel as well as we are reaching a good number, my friends. We are receiving comments and achieving more and more viewers and subscribers every day. If you want to have the data, we will provide it to you online as well in the pen drive. So this is Kevin Lopez today signing off once again with a beautiful chapter that is the Inchcape Rock. Thank you very much.